previously at New Perspectives Music World Headquarters. Hey, how you doing? And thanks for coming along with me on my little uh, hybrid acoustic guitar journey. I didn't really mention it too much in last week's video, but I'm trying to do some other things here besides make an acoustic guitar with the neck attachment. Basically, I want to make it go together like at a bolt-on electric guitar. Um, but what's cool about this mold that I made is when that doesn't work, because <laughs> it probably won't, uh, I can just use this mold to make traditional, you know, mortise and tenon style or dovetail style um, joints for necks. But I have some other uh, neck ideas I want to try too. But before we get ahead, let's uh, kick back to... So this is what I made last time and uh so you can see it came out and it's all worked but but you can see like i have a couple seams here because i i did that wrong uh this seam looks fine and then i got this crack here that i would have to seam and so the, the idea is um i'm not worried about making these perfect joints because what i'm going to do once the box is together with the top and bottom is use a router jig to clean that all up and then put like a nice piece of decorative wood in these spaces here. Uh, and so if I were to finish this one, which I might still, now let me show you this one I'm about to glue up. Uh, you can see uh, I'm still using the same mold, but what I did with the edge, the sides is I ran this side all the way down to the end. So that goes all the way up here. Uh, and then this side is coming up here and we just have this little tiny seam right here we're gonna have to take care of. Uh, which looks good to me. Now on the back, I have uh, my seam is not centered now because I had already cut these sides and I just pushed this side up. And so now, uh, you know, in the future, I'll, I'll edit these. But um, uh, so the seam I have to fill is here. And so what I'm going to do is I'll do that and then I'll just do a matching line here um, on the other side of the center and it'll just become a look. Okay, but so I have it all clamped up here and this is the back of the guitar this time I'm doing first. Uh, to make the front flush because there's a slight angle to it. Uh, I cut new blocks out of some scrap butcher block and I'm going to go ahead and do the back first. But you'll also see I didn't tweak it quite as tight here. And so now we don't have a split there. We have this nice um, curve that's conducive to the tolerances of this laser curved wood. So everything's looking a lot better. I'll add my, my um, curfing to the other side and uh, continue from there. The front of the box is thinner than the back of the box, which is why I wanted to do the top surface first, because I want that surface to be flat. And now I'm doing the back here. I cut a layer off my mold so I can fit it in over the uh, stuff. So the whole idea is I want the, the whole angle to be the back of the instrument so the top is all flat. But what I screwed up on this time is that I didn't glue in the neck and heel block when I had it upside down. I'm doing it now, and so now those ended up flush to the back instead of the top. So I had a little bit of sanding to do to fix that. But next time I'll get that right, I'll, I'll glue those blocks in with it all set up. And then I, I have the sandpaper on a block that's just to sort of evenly sand things out. And you can see how it's kind of sketchy here because the wood is out of the mold. And so I should have really just left it in the mold while I clean these edges up. Now here I used my Square X, um, which is available at squaretools.com. The new ones are better than this one. This is an old one. Um, to measure the inside depth and then mark it on the outside so I could just clean up this this excess wood that's there. And um, I'm going to have to try to find, there's another square tool I'm using as a straight edge. Um, I'm going to find a better way to do this. I think I could probably write it right into my, uh, my files potentially. But this works fine. The sides squared away, it was time to dig into making the top and back. And so this is some reclaimed cedar fence boards that I have uh, that I'm using for the top for one of them. Um, I thought it'd be kind of cool to do like a hybrid instrument, which is what they, um, it's a hybrid in a lot of ways, I guess, this instrument. But like with the, the double bass world, I know they would, a lot of times you'd buy a, an upright bass with a carved top, but then the sides and back are plywood that's been you know, bent to fit. And um, it was like an affordable and more durable way of doing things. So I thought that might be a good way to approach these guitars. So I could get a little bit of actual tone wood on the top where it really matters, but then use the closet doors for the back and side. And then the other one, my original one that I kind of messed up, I'm going to just use an all closet door because I like to do that. Um, but the great thing about doing an acoustic guitar is that I can use my, my thunder laser to cut out all of the, the parts because they're nice and thin. So uh, it's a real easy, fast way to start cutting these shapes out and this is just a little scrap of uh, a veneer I have to do like a rosette I laser cut the slot then gluing this different grained wood into that spot helps protect uh, the edge from like chipping and splitting I 
I also cut a bridge backing plate from closet door, of course, and glued that in. And um, now while this is all glued up and drying, I started to cut out my other top from the door as well as some backs, and I was getting ready to do all of the bracing. Back to the closet doors, I do save the edges that I cut off when I save the plywood because it's some fairly decent, nice and dry pine in there, um, which is I thought would be pretty good for my bracing. So I cut it down to some thinner strips and I sort of measured roughly, uh, you know, where these pieces would go. I wanted to get them pretty close to the side. Um, and I started with the back because that's easier. I'm just doing three pieces across. I cut them to fit. For the top, I decided to do an X bracing, and uh, it's a pretty typical style of bracing that, uh, you know, I'm still kind of learning about this stuff, and I'm curious to see how this went. I feel like I could have made these pieces of wood a little bit smaller and thinner. I am going to carve them down, of course, um, but in the past when I've made acoustic guitars, I haven't braced the top enough, and so this time I, I might have done a little bit of overkill, but I figured that would be a better way to go on this attempt as I sort of dial in this stuff. But now I need to glue all these pieces down and um, that's why I built this thing called a go deck which uh, if you haven't seen before you use like basically dowels or rods um, and you you wedge them into a small space so they bend under pressure and they you can really pinpoint and accurately put pressure down onto small skinny pieces of wood. So uh, if you go to like say Stumac or someplace like that, you can buy go decks that are designed for guitar making. They're very expensive, and just these rods alone uh, usually sell for about ten dollars a piece. If you just want to make your own board, and they're a little bit more high tech than the system I have here. But what I did is I simply uh, took a measurement and screwed uh, a, a ceiling plate. Uh, lowering my ceiling just a little bit there um, to make it so I just had a little bit less than 48 inches between my work surface and where I'm gluing. And I have a couple pieces of MDF stacked up there you can see so I can actually adjust the height by just stacking more material on my bench making them get closer to the ceiling. And then the rods I'm using are just those driveway markers that people in the Northeast put out to mark their driveway. Um, so when the snowplow goes down, it knows where to stop plowing. <laughs> and these were $3 a piece versus like $10 a piece for a go bar that's actually half the length and a little bit thicker and stronger, but these worked perfectly. I, I couldn't be more happy with the way this all turned out. I also like that unlike that Stumac uh, piece that's like a, a little box that you would have to then store, there's like really no storage involved for this. I just pick up that piece of MDF and just put it put it with all my other stock and the piece on the ceiling isn't in my way. Uh, so when I'm not using this space for this purpose, it's just regular all-purpose space again. Uh, yeah, so this is a really inexpensive, uh, easy way to set up a, a Go Bar, Go Deck gluing system that I think uh, really everybody can probably use and have in their shop like there's a lot of times that I'm going to use this now instead of doing my other thing where I usually just put down weights this is just much more accurate and and uh, cleaner of course now I want to remove some wood and shape these down to sort of make them as a little more minimal and less heavy and dense um, you can't really do this beforehand even with the go deck system you'd have a hard time sort of holding them down if they don't have these square flat surfaces so this is typically the way I've seen it done where people uh, you know just glue them down and then shape them with some hand tools and it's since this is a pretty soft light wood it's as you can see it's uh, pretty quick and easy um, and like I said in the future I feel like I could have made these a little bit smaller and thinner um, than I did uh, I'm still figuring all that out I gotta I gotta make some guitars and figure out what I like and don't like before I can know what I like and don't like <laughs> but the one lesson I always try to impart over and over again is that you know it doesn't you don't have to do it the way everybody else does it everybody else is already doing it that way um, if you want to find your own voice in it you have to take some risks and take some chances and try some new things and learn as you go once I was satisfied with the state of the bracing, it was time to glue it together. So uh, I started on this one with the top, and I, I was gifted all of these, uh, these edge clamps, which are very, very useful. You could just use squeeze clamps and stuff too, but these are designed for violins and guitars, and they, they work great. And I'm actually a few shy. I could have used a few more. I did make the top and the bottom just a little bit oversized, um, but not too oversized because I wanted to have some sort of reference. Things sort of move around on you while you're gluing them, and I... I did my best to sort of 
evenly space it and, and get it all in there because it's not in the mold anymore so it does have some flexibility and then just simply cut off the excess material off of it glued on the the, uh, the back and then did the same thing there originally I was saying how I would do two of these to make them um, like parallel and make a pattern but I might just leave just one offset and just like why I make more work for myself. One of the nice things about working with these closet doors is they do slice pretty easily with a razor blade. So instead of setting up a whole router jig, I just simply set up a straight edge and, and cut the edges clean to glue in my piece of wood. It came out pretty good. So these are some of the kind of things where it's like you see the edge of that of that door there that I might want to think of some other way to do. I guess I could probably just cut a little piece out and put a little wood binding there and there too. Um, that might work. And there's stuff like this that happens so easily with uh, these closet doors. This Luan is just very flaky and there are other types of closet doors. Like I have like the ones I made the drums out of or birch that are like a lot less likely to do this kind of horrible stuff. Um, but these are the more common ones and a little lighter. It is difficult to make these look like fine woodworking. It ain't. So now we have a couple boxes uh, ready to get made into guitars. So this was that first one. Um, I didn't bother doing all the seams, but I used this to, you know, practice some techniques for seams. And I also have bound this one, which I haven't done yet on the second one with the real wood top. We'll talk more about that in the next video. Uh, so, you know, I'm learning some things on this. And then another thing, I have this sort of beater cheap acoustic guitar that I've been sort of referencing for measurements. And that one is about at the, the thicker part in the back, almost five inches thick. And so I kind of use that as a reference for this one here, which is about, you know, four and three quarter inches thick. But I think because the body I'm making is a little bit smaller, I think that looks a little bit too thick. Um, for this size. Uh, I wanted to try and, you know, experiment with some of these numbers. Now this one here was that first one I made that I cut down to about, it's actually just the same thickness all the way around now at about three and a half inches thick. And I actually really like the proportion of this size. So I think um, going forward, I would probably, and I do want it to get a little bit bigger in the back. I think I would probably shoot for around, you know, three and a half, three to three and three quarter inches thick. Uh, I like the proportions of this a lot. Um, and then another thing that I was thinking about in the process is that, you know, I went and, because I'm always trying to design in the computer as much as possible, and I put all these holes in. Um, now everything sort of gets wibbly wobbly when you're putting together the, uh, the sides. And so I was being very careful to try and make sure this neck pocket and these holes still lined up so I don't end up with like sort of a, a crooked shape. So we'll see if I'll even be able to use these holes or if I'll have to do something else. I think in the future what I'll probably do is, is set it all up and then line it up properly like you're supposed to instead of trusting my computer work to translate to the real wibbly wobbly world. But this is all the stuff that we're learning right now and trying to figure out because, you know, part of it for me is not just making them, but it's also about finding ways to make them efficient and keeping costs down and, and making them affordable, you know, but also making them cool and unique. See what happens next. See you next time.